Uh, I come to you today from the comfort of an armchair in the living room because I don't want to do the whole fancy standing in front of the camera and blah 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 blah. So, today I'm going to be talking about the costumes in uh, The Favorite, which is a movie that just came out about uh, Queen Anne, who was queen from 1702 to 1714, I believe. And it talks about her relationship with the Duchess of Marlborough. Uh, I'm not going to delve into the historical accuracy of its portrayals of Queen Anne and of the Duchess of Marlborough. It's not meant to be incredibly historically accurate. Um, it's been very dramatized and cinematized. Uh, so I'm just going to be talking about the costumes. Um, it was a very interesting movie, a very intense. Um, I highly recommend you see it if you haven't. I'm also going to link um, to the trailer down below. Um, but let's get started. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is this sort of weird thing that all of the main characters are dressed in black and white exclusively, which is not accurate. Uh, that is strange. Um, but they've clearly done it for, um, you know, symbolic purposes and, and purposes of making the movie more something. Uh, I'm sure it has a purpose and I'm just not smart enough to figure out what it is. But, um, they're not trying to say, oh, wealthy women of this era only wore black and white. Um, it is done for theatrical purposes, but even so, that is kind of a point against it because it is not at all true. I have some, I have some pictures towards the end of the video of some actual clothing that was worn by uh, court women um, from this time period, and uh, the clothing was very colorful. Um, so that was just something interesting. Also, there's a lot of this, if, um, if you look at this picture of Emma Stone, you can see the lace on her, uh, bodice. Uh, and that same type of lace is repeated over and over and over again throughout the film. Here you can see a picture of the Duchess of Marlborough, and she has the same lace on her hunting outfit, and that hunting outfit is going to come up again later. Um, here is a picture of Queen Anne being told that she looks like a raccoon, um, and if you look at her four-part, I don't know if it's called a four-part in the early 1700s, but that's essentially what it is, uh, and it's the kind of underskirt that pokes out in the front. Um, you can see that that's got almost the exact same lace, and if you look at this woman with her back, to us is the Duchess of Marlborough, and she's got the same lace there. Um, it's almost as if they bought a ton of this lace, and then they just had to use it all up. Um, here's another uh, image of Emma Stone, uh, I think, tying a necklace onto Queen Anne or something. You can see she's got the same lace, and it's also weirdly shiny. It looks like it's almost made out of like pleather or, or some sort of like acrylic. Um, so that is not accurate, and it's also kind of weird. They also use it as necklaces. Um, I also want to talk about the uh, hunting or shooting costume that the Duchess of Marlborough wears. Um, that is not accurate. This is a man's attire. A court woman would not have been caught dead wearing trousers. And the Duchess of Marlborough wears trousers kind of frequently throughout this film. Uh, here is... A picture of what an actual uh, hunting or shooting or riding dress would have looked like in from around 1690 to 1710. Um, you can see that it is not trousers. <laughs> it is a highly ornate gown. Um, so this is not accurate. I think they're trying to make her seem more masculine to maybe kind of have her contrast a little bit with Emma Stone's character, but this is not accurate. Even if it might make sense uh, cinematically, it's very, very inaccurate. Um, but 
those are those things that I pointed out are the main glaring inaccuracies, or not not necessarily inaccuracies, because like the white and black clothing. I mean, there was white and black clothing back then. It just wasn't, you know, court wasn't just dominated by only white and black. But there was white and black clothing, and the lace thing is just slightly. I mean, yeah, the lace thing is inaccurate, but those are those are really the only inaccuracies. Other than that, the costumes are quite accurate. So these dresses are historically accurate to an extent, but they've also been modernized. Because um, they, they have this very contemporary look about them, I think. Especially the dresses that are worn by the Duchess of Mar Marlborough and the Emma Stone character, whose name escapes me. Um, they just, they have a very contemporary look, and like, the fabrics really have nothing to do with the early 18th century. They are, like, weirdly shiny. They, they just look like very modern fabrics. So they've, they've taken these, this historical background, and then just made it slightly off. Um, and that kind of adds to the whole disturbing, uh, feel of the movie, um, because it just doesn't feel quite right. There's just something slightly wrong, be it the costumes are too over the top or not over the top enough, or what have you. They just don't feel quite right, and I think that was very cleverly done, and I think it really works as far as the movie goes, um, and I get what, the, what they were doing, but since we're rating historical accuracy, that is a few, that is, that is a, a, not quite in its favor, because it isn't, they aren't quite historically accurate, so they have this historically accurate base, but then they've just kind of made them slightly weird. I also want to talk a little bit about some of the clothing that some of the male characters wear, because there they really have taken it and dialed it up past 11. They've taken the clothing that men would wear and dialed it up to a 20. Um, this is a picture of a politician and <laughs> just makes me makes me giggle just looking at him. Um, they do establish pretty early on that he's a dandy, but even so, this is this is a caricature of what men wore in around 1700. This is not this is, this is taken from the, around 1700 there were these uh, drawings that were made that would be published in magazines that would mock what the upper class was wearing and they would have everything be very exaggerated and look ridiculous and this is what that looks like. I mean, this is, this is, this is, it's a caricature and it looks absolutely absurd. Um, there's another picture of the same guy and you see he's got his face painted white, he's got like this heart-shaped lipstick on, and his cheeks are very rouge, and this absolutely absurd wig, and his this, this incredibly lacy cuffs sticking out of his jacket. Um, it's just, again, it's accurate, but it's dialed up to 20, and everything is just bigger and more, and just bit more than it would have been, and again, that adds to the sort of disturbing and weird, unsettling feel of the whole movie, but it, again, isn't accurate, because it's just so over the top. Um, there's also one thing I have to mention. Uh, there's one point where the Duchess of Marlborough tells this character that his mascara is running, and that is a line taken straight out of the 20th century and put into this period drama. Um, they did not have mascara. Mascara was not a concept. They could line their eyes in coal, K-O-H-L, but they there was no concept of mascara, and that was not a word back then. Um, so it's this weird... This movie kind of reminds me of uh, Sofia Coppola's Marie Antoinette, almost, because it's this period drama that is relatively accurate, but it's just done in a very modern way. Like, this in, this movie feels very modern to me, despite the incredible setting. I don't know where this was shot, but the, the set is absolutely amazing. 
and despite the relatively historically accurate costumes, they're just weird to the extent that they feel modern, and also the, the whole tone of this movie just feels very, very 21st century to me. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie, um, but I I think I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 for costumes, because they are very good, um, and they're definitely very much grounded. There's obviously been a lot of research that has gone into actual court dress from around 1700. Uh, so they, they clearly knew what they were doing. And that, um, that gives them a lot of credit in my book. Um, and the deviations that they made from history were obviously intentional. When they deviated from history, it, it wasn't that they just didn't know that this wasn't a thing back then. It was that they decided to do that to make the movie feel a certain way. So I, that makes me more forgiving of historical inaccuracies. Um, but I can't give it a 10 out of 10 because they do have these fabrics that have nothing to do with the, uh, with the, early, seven, or the early 18th century. And they have um, with that weird lace and like the very monochromatic palette. Um, so even though those things I think were intentional, it still does detract from the historical accuracy. Um, so I think uh, an 8 out of 10 I would give this. So now I have some pictures of, some actual pictures of Queen Anne. This is a state portrait. And you can see that it's colorful. You can see she's wearing this beautiful cloth of gold gown with this, uh, navy blue, it's more like a, but I'm just going to call it a regular blue, with this blue um, cape with this blue silk lining, um, but you can also see that the general shapes of the dresses, you, like, you can see that the, the dress when um, Queen Anne was being told that she looked like a raccoon, but the dress that she was wearing then was inspired by this dress. It had those same things across the stomacher, which is the triangular piece going from her uh, breasts down to her waist. It has, this one here has those black lines and um, the one in the movie had that too. And this also has the ermine detailing. Um, so you can see that, that the uh, dresses that Queen Anne wore in the movie were very much inspired by this. But it is very colorful. Here's another one. Uh, I think this one is slightly earlier, uh, this portrait. Um, but she's wearing almost the same dress. It's got it's this beautiful, this I think is her coronation portrait actually. Um, because she's holding the orb and scepter and she's wearing the crown. Um, but it's this beautiful cloth of gold, again, um, with the ermine detailing and this uh, diamond jewel encrusted belt and this uh, absolutely fabulous uh, chain of office that she's wearing around her neck. This is a portrait of a woman in her hunting attire. So you can see that she is wearing something that is, it's certainly inspired by masculine garments. Um, if you look at her, uh, her neck kerchief thing, uh, that is very masculine. She's wearing a waistcoat underneath this fabulous red and gold coat. Uh, and then she's wearing this, this uh, coat with these wonderful giant sleeves and this fabulous gold embroidery on it. The waistcoat and the overcoat and her neck stock and even her wig and hat are masculine garments. These are garments made for a man and they're just fitted to be worn over stays. Um, but she's still wearing a skirt and she still looks feminine. Uh, I am going to link to a video under here from um, Prior Tire. If you're fans of my channel, you've definitely heard of Prior Tire. You've probably seen this video, but um, the woman who runs that channel, Isabella, has uh, a video about getting dressed in uh, 1690s court clothing, and she also uh, dresses up in 1690s hunting clothing. Um, and that is a few years earlier than uh, The Favorite is set, but the clothing was not that different. And that is a really good representation of what would have been worn, not only at court, but also 
um, for hunting. This is from around 1790 to, uh, or not 17, excuse me, 1690 to 1710. Um, and you can see that there, that again, the, the costumes and the favorite were very much influenced by this. They even had the, they weren't afraid of the, um, the, uh, it's called a frontage, um, the, uh, ruffled, um, headdress that sticks straight up. They weren't afraid of doing that, and that, I think, is... I, I'm really glad that they, they had that, because it's just so ridiculous and wonderful. Um, and they weren't... Then most often movies set in this time are afraid of having, like, the, the, the weird... Just, like, the movies and historical movies are often afraid of having, like, just the, the weird pieces of clothing. Like, movies in the 1890s often don't have the giant sleeves. In the 1880s, they generally don't have the huge bustle. Um, Elizabethan movies seldom have a gigantic, ridiculous starched ruff or the French wheel farthingale. Uh, and, and in this period, they generally don't have, like, the, the weird frontage thing. Uh, but they have them in this movie, and I'm very, very happy about that. Um, here's another one. These are, uh, Victorian prints of earlier clothing. Um, again... You can see that the costumes in the favorite have been influenced by this. Here's another one. Um, and then lastly, a picture of a man, what a regular man would wear from around this time. This is set slightly before the time that the favorite, this is a set. This is from slightly before the time that the favorite took place. But you can see that the clothing that was worn by men at this time was not nearly as over the top as it is shown to be in the favorite. So, this concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope to see you soon. Bye!